thanks everyone for your audience. My name is Reina. I work with the developer experience team and the graph team. And for the past couple of months, we've been working on bringing to you a graph CLI. And um, the, graph, the graph CLI here is our solution, our cross-platform command line interface that allows developers to access and use the graph CLI. We are aware that there are already existing CLI ways to access the graph, but we really wanted to focus on a more simplistic way to um, access the graph that isn't particularly PowerShell. So knowing very well that PowerShell, like we want to point out that our solution is definitely going to be based off of developer preference. And so we want to focus a lot on how to customize a CLI experience that allows our customers to, to be able to access the graph with the specific scenarios that they want to. And so far, that's what the alternative experience for developers look like. If you're looking for something that isn't PowerShell, that's lighter and more simplistic, less verbose, and a way that you can use any JSON command-based tool for the graph, this is our solution. We're still in the stages of like really trying to define who the customers of the CLI are. We know they span across Azure admins, Office 365 admins, and DevSecOps developers. And so we're really trying to gather enough intel, gather enough data on what features would actually make a CLI experience to access a graph even better. So on the Azure CLI side, um, there is the deprecation of the Azure AD Graph API, which means that we will have customers who want to access the graph across the Azure platform and the graph one. So we're still trying to figure out what the scenarios for that is and um, get alignment on that level. So our journey has been a couple of months. We started off with just really trying to, to have a consistent experience for our Azure AD graph users, plus also facilitate what the common scenarios for the graph are. So when we put out our, our first public preview, which is 0.1.6, we were really just focusing on covering the main scenarios for accessing the graph while trying to make sure that we have an a consistent experience um, when it comes to command, command um, structures and file names. And so we've been working on um, making that improvement on how our command structures look like, how the file names are structured in the CLI. And so we do have some missing scenarios on the graph that aren't yet on the CLI, but that's going to be coming pretty soon on the next public preview. And um, with also only available right now on Windows through MSI, and you can also just clone the CLI on our repo. But we're adding support for Mac OS and possibly um, Linux in this coming preview. And we also have added support for beta and third party extension, which means that you can come in and have your custom extensions on the CLI. And uh, again, based off of just like customer feedback and testing, there will be improvements on the command structures. And we're also adding more code samples because we don't have um, our documentation already on the official graph docs. We have our samples on our repo at the moment. So we're working on making sure that our documentation is available and we're going to be adding samples to help um, you get started with the CLI um, even faster. We're going to run a demo for you, but for now, um, as I mentioned, other platforms are coming soon, but only now currently available on Windows. Yes, you can have app-only calls using the CLI, and we're using, uh, this is primarily how our group command structure looks like. You can use J James Path to customize your output, and we have support for the more common scenario samples on our documentation in the repository. As I mentioned before, we're like in a unique place right now because we are trying to figure out the things that really matter to the users of the CLI and the experiences that would truly add value. So for now, our main 
call to action is to use the CLI, tell us what you think uh, about it, tell us how you're using the CLI so that we can see what our next focus is on. We do have alignment with anybody who falls under the Azure Admin Office 365 Admin platforms, and we're really trying to see what the next best um, shipping for the CLI is going to look like. So we're road mapping that process now. So your input would be super, super, super helpful for us at this stage. Um, right now, I'm going to hand over to Sam, and Sam is going to give us a demo of the CLI for a few minutes. Um, but in the meantime, feel free to drop in questions as I will be able to see them now. Sam? feel free to take over the screen. Thank you, Rina. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Samo. I'm one of the developers in the Microsoft Graph Developer Experiences team. Our whole charter is essentially to produce SDKs and tools in different languages and to bring the complete set uh, of functionality of the graph to as wide um, an audience as possible. So um, we're excited to announce the new Microsoft Graph CLI as part of this roster of tools. Um, the CLI is a convenient way for users to call the APIs of Microsoft Graph, especially from the command line or in a scripted environment. Um, as Rowena mentioned, we do have partial SDK, which essentially allows you to call the, uh, the Graph API from the command line. But uh, in our bid to essentially make developers are where they are, we decided to come up with the CLI. Uh, for users who uh, may not uh, prefer to work in a partial environment, maybe you want to work in Linux or, um, for example, using Docker, then the CLI would be the solution for you. So in my demo, I'll just walk you through the basics of using the CLI, uh, how to perform uh, actions on the graph using the CLI, and then hopefully uh, with that in a small introduction, you can get time to test test out the CLI and uh, give us your feedback on how it works. So I'm just going to share my screen. So as Dorina mentioned, at this point, we have full support for Windows. Our team is working hard to roll out support for Mac OS, and then uh, Linux and Docker will, will follow a suit of hopefully by the end of the year. So at this point, the easiest way to get the CLI is to install the MSI from our from uh, our releases. So if you go to our repo and our releases, um, you will find um, the MSI for the graph. So all you need to do is just uh, download the MSI and install it on your machine, and then you'll be able to use the CLI. So um, for this demo, I'll just use um, a basic PowerShell window um, to show you the basics uh, of the CLI and how would you would use it. So um, to check that the CLI is available, all you need to do is run MGC command. We're using MGC um, as the entry point to the CLI. If, for those of you who are familiar with Azure CLI, you would know you would uh, you know that they use AZ as the entry point. For MG, we're using um, for Microsoft Graph, we're using MGC. Initially, it was MG, but uh, we found conflicts um, on the Mac OS platform with um, a micro GNU um, application, so we switched to MGC. Um, you guys can also test out and please feel free to give us feedback if you find this is not as intuitive um, as uh, as it could be. So uh, to use the CLI, to check that the CLI is installed, you just run M MGC. And um, what this, this will do, it will list for you um, a welcome message to the CLI. As well, as well as list all the available uh, subgroups and subcommands, um, which correspond to um, the different services that are accessible uh, on the graph using the CLI. Uh, you can check the version of the CLI installed just by running MGC version. And again, um, this will list for you the Python version that's running the CLI, uh, the path, the Python executable, as well as the version of the CLI, which in this case is 0.1.6. As the convention with many command line interface, you can access help for this for the for any sub command in the CLI using the help parameter. So um, to access the overall help, you just run MGC 
um, dash dash help. So yeah, again, this would list for you all the available subgroups and you can get uh, help for a specific either command or a, or a, or a command group by running um, MGC for, for example, for applications, you would do uh, MGC applications help. Uh, you can also use dash H uh, for short to access help. And then it would list for you um, all the sub commands that you can run within that uh, command group and what each of those um, endpoints do. So as you can see here, uh, by default, the CLI ships with V1 endpoints, um, but in our latest release, we also support users to essentially install uh, beta extensions on demand. So all you need to do is just uh, MGC add, and then you specify the extension. So it would, if it would be um, application, it would be application uh, dash beta, and then it would install uh, that um, extension on demand. So before you actually can actually use the CLI, you will need to authenticate um, against the graph, and you can do this easily just by typing MGC um, login. So what what this will do by default, it would use um, the interactive browser um, authentication uh, to log you into uh, the CLI. So it would load open a browser window and for you to specify whichever um, account you want to log in, and then once you're logged in. Um, if you close that window and go back to the CLI window, you would find logged in a uh, message that you are logged in successfully. Um, so the other thing you need to uh, to keep in mind is that before you can access specific workloads, you may, you need to make sure that you have the the necessary permissions um, to access that service. So if you want to access a functionality uh, with regard to users, you would have to log in. And then using the scopes parameter, you have to uh, essentially um, pass the scopes that you intend to to with, with which correspond to the action that you intend to to perform on that specific service. So if I want to get a list of all my users, then I would have to pass a scope for like a uh, user uh, dot read dot all. So. You don't need to log out again for you to run this. You can just run this if you're already logged in. And what this will do, if you do not, if you haven't already um, consented to that permission, you would get, you, it would take you to a window where you would um, uh, consent to that, those specific scopes before then, and then you would uh, get, uh, go back to the CLI window and you can be able to run those commands. So in my case, I already had consented to those scopes. So it just automatically um, continued the current session. So. Now that I have um, the required scopes, I can go ahead and list um, the users in my, within my specific tenant. So to do that, I would I would run MGC users and then user list. And what this would do, it would just essentially list out uh, all the users in my tenant and by default, I would get the list of users um, in JSON format by default. We do support uh, output in different formats. So if I wanted the output in a table format, all I would need to do is um, add the output parameter, then specify a table format. So running that, running the same command with that, um, uh, sorry. Running the same command um, with that, um, with specifying the output to list the, the output um, in table format. So as you can see, you you do you sometimes can get a lot of uh, output, and probably you're interested in a specific only a specific subset of that output. So uh, you, to that you can you can either use the select parameter. Uh, so if you want to, to get the display names, or the other thing that is alternatively you can use is using Gemspark uh, query language for JSON. So to to get the specific um, uh, parameters uh, that you want from that output. So to use Gemspark, uh, I would just let me just paste the command here to save time. Um, so this command essentially uses the Gemspark query and specifies that you only want the IDs and the display names. Um, of the users. So running this query 
would list for you only those specific properties that you that you're interested in. So James Path is one of uh, the one of the uh, uh, really big features of the CLI because it allows you to you can run really complex queries against the um, the CLI and 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 get the feedback that you want um, um, in 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 in, this, in the specific format that you want. So for example, assuming you want to filter for a specific user, all you need to do is uh, use the the question mark um, uh, James Path uh, property and then specify the the specific keyword that you want to to filter for and specify the output and you would get that um, back. So um, the other thing you can manage essentially all the workloads that are available in the graph using the, the CLI. To in the interest of time, I would not walk you. I would not um, walk you through all the scenarios that you can use the CLI for. But you, uh, if you go to our repo, you essentially you can be able to. We have our samples folder, and that essentially um, allows you to look at this different. Gives you some of the samples and. Uh, with the with the different scenarios in which you can use the CLI. So what I would encourage um, each and every one of you is, if you have time, please download the CLI, test it out, try it out. Um, we are really open uh, to feedback. Uh, we are working to improve some of the command lines and essentially align them uh, to how Azure commands uh, look like. So in this previous stage that where we are, I would really um, encourage each one of you to just download the CLI, go to our repo, uh, the samples folder, Try the different samples against uh, your uh, graph subscription, and please let us know how it works for you. Excellent. Thank you, Samuel Rowena. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us a great demo of the CLI and what's uh, all available with us. Mm -hmm.